Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Lutri deck. So despite what the name implies, we're not actually playing Brawl, despite the deck looking a lot like a Brawl deck. And uh, that's because we're playing Lutri as our companion, a 3-mana 3-2 legendary elemental otter with flash. And each non-land card in our starting deck has to have a different name, so all one-offs except for the mana base. And then when Lutri enters the battlefield, if we cast it, we can copy target instant or sorcery spell we control and choose new targets for the copy. So the deck's going to be pretty heavy on uh, instants and sorceries that we can potentially copy with Lutri. We're also mostly playing at instant speed, which also goes well alongside Lutri's flash ability. So we'll see quite a few counter spells to make sure we can get to the late game and then leverage Lutri's uh, value when entering the battlefield. So let's take a look at the entire deck. Lots of one-offs here, so I'll go over them quickly. We've got some card draw with opt some cheap removal with shock. Most of the red 2 drops here are going to be removal spells. We've got the Blitz as a nice new addition from Ikoria. Cathartic Reunion, also great to copy with Lutri once we get to the late game. Fire Prophecy is more cheap removal alongside Lava Coil. Scorching Dragonfire. Thrill, similar to the Cathartic Reunion. We've got some X spells here in Thassa's Intervention as a split card counter spell draw spell. And finally, have Promise, which can be pretty nice in the late game, getting back a sorcery and an instant from the graveyard. Then we've got some counter spells with Tails End, great in a world full of companions. We've got Quench, we've got Negate to counter non creature spells, Essence Scatter to counter creature spells, Sprite Dragon as one of our win conditions that picks up a plus one plus one counter whenever we cast a non creature spell. We've got Goblin Electromancer making all our instants and sorceries one cheaper, and an Augur of Bolas which has a decent hit rate in this deck. Then moving on, we've got both the Brazen Borrower and Bone Crusher Giant as excellent adventure creatures with nice instants attached. We've got some counter spells with Mystical Dispute, Neutralize, Sinister Sabotage, and Ionize. Narset is also great in a world full of cycling decks. And then a Flame Sweep as one of the sweepers in the deck to help against the Go White creature decks. We've got Crackling Drake as one of our win conditions. Chemist's Insight as a nice card draw spell, so we can play it if we don't need to use a counter spell end of turn. Storm's Wrath as another sweeper that also hits Planeswalkers. Aral Storm Conduit can also get some pretty good value since we can copy instants and sorceries, much like Lutri. Aral's Outburst is another nice instant to copy. Then we've got another Aral Planeswalker that can draw cards with the plus ability, maybe kill a creature with a minus and also cares about instants and sorceries in the graveyard. And then some more of the win conditions include Niv-Mizzet, which is also great in this deck. Shark Typhoon we can cycle or just cast. And then a Boon of the Wishgiver will often cycle for one mana, but every now and then we might cast it for six and commence the endgame, another powerful instant that we can uh, potentially play end of turn to put a win condition in play, and Expansion Explosion can uh, use both halves pretty effectively in this deck. And then a mana base, we've got two Castle Ventress, which also plays well alongside all the other counter spells in the deck, seven islands, seven mountains, four steam vents, and four Temple of Epiphany. So outside of the mana base, this could have been a Brawl deck, except for the fact that Lutri is banned in uh, Brawl, but we'll still get to experience it in standard instead. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and seems fine. If we don't need a flame sweep in the matchup, we can get rid of it with a fire prophecy. We also have cards like uh, Thrill of Possibility and Cathartic Reunion as more ways of getting rid of unneeded cards. So it's okay to have some more narrow cards in some matchups. Don't think I'll need Thrill. Keep up Negate just in case. Got our next couple land drops covered, so bottom the mountain. Yeah, I might just cash in the Thassa's intervention for two if they don't do anything end of turn. So 
So this is looking like a team of reclamation deck. Negates the intervention. They're likely playing Uro, so potentially Prophecy with Lutri to copy it can take it out, or we can just counter it. Not sure if uh, Prophecy is going to have many other targets in the matchup. So I guess I wish I still had that uh, card we put on the bottom, the Thrill to maybe discard one of the removal spells since we're not getting any targets. Cycle Shark Typhoon, alright, that's the targets. We'll just kill it now. Finale currently doesn't have too many targets. My own Shark Typhoon. So I can return the favor. Brazen Borrower, sure. If they attack, I could Shark Typhoon to try and ambush it. They could have another Borrower to bounce it. Or they could just resolve something scary, which I then wouldn't be able to counter. So I think it's still better to just take the three and keep up my counter spells and then end of turn I can maybe still cycle the Typhoon. They can still cast an Expansion Explosion, but they wouldn't be able to resolve like a Wilderness Reclamation. Then guess we'll start attacking. Can also use Tails Ends to uh, counter Shark Typhoon making a big shark. But our opponent has nothing, didn't even use a castle, so. Maybe keeping up their counter spells. I think I can afford to scry. Since I'll still have negate and tails end up. These are both okay. Probably go for Rawl. Although I guess I don't have anything amazing to copy. But just crying and dealing a bit of damage is fine. Neutralize. Do we want to fight over this? But currently we're ahead on board, so just keeping my current position and protecting it with my counter spells seems better. So we'll let that slide. They could block the shark and use a burn spell to finish it off, which I may fight over. Still haven't used our loot tree. Ah, flame sweep makes sense. Let's negate that. I 
Brazen Borrower bouncing the shark. Do we want to fight over that? Opponent has two cards, six mana, so if they go like Wilderness Reclamation into Expansion Explosion, that would be worse for me. And it would be better to have Lutri up when I use my Ionize, because then I can potentially counter twice. I'll let that go. We'll be a bit cautious. Currently still winning the race. Got Ionize for Expansion Explosion, Tails End for a potential uh, Shark Typhoon, so there's a Reclamation. Do we fight over the mana, or do we fight over the payoff? If the game goes on for a while, then the extra mana means extra scries with Castle, and who knows what else. But the Reclamation by itself, of course, doesn't do anything. I think I still want to ionize, because we could also potentially just kill them next turn if we win this counter battle and get a loot in play. So if they counter back, then loot basically kills them. Expansion. Copying the ionize. Yeah, so I can loot to copy my own ionize to counter their ionize. And then it'll take 4 damage from the Ionizes. Alright, another expansion. Does this do anything? Can counter my own loot tree. But uh, doesn't counter anything on the stack that I care about. Alright, I guess that resolves. At least they don't have a payoff left in hand, but we didn't win the game. And they do have castles now to scry towards some more stuff. I could use Tails Ends to counter the trigger. Is that worthwhile? I basically deny them a scry too. Maybe that is worth it. They can scry again on upkeep. Hmm, maybe I'm better off holding the tail's end and then can maybe catch them off guard by countering the trigger next turn. Finale currently doesn't have a sorcery. Let's just cast opts. Alright, that could do it. So I can attack and then Explosion for five, which is just enough. And get to return the favor here. All right, sweet. So nice counter battle against the team of Reclamation deck. Able to close out the game just in time. Niv Mizzet was also going to be a pretty nice one to resolve. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yorion deck. Tails End should be pretty good. I guess we'll try it. Don't need more lands. Just looking for more counter spells. Gotta keep up Tails Ends so we can potentially counter to Fairy. Next turn I can play Electromancer and still have uh, Tails End up for one blue mana. Narsets. 
I guess is also counter worthy. And then we get to resolve our own Narset, perhaps. Would love to find another counter spell. Some burn spells and an opts. Dragonfire can be used to finish off a planeswalker, so it's not completely useless. Might prefer that over an opts. Sure. And this turn. Play Electromancer, keep up Thrill and Boon as opposed to tapping out for a while. Tamyo. Sure. Could thrill in response. To look for negate specifically, but I think they can have Tamyo. Let us see if your talents are worth cattle to the library. And then end of turn. I'll thrill discarding. Probably Temple. And then I could Dragonfire copy it with Lutri to kill Tamyo. Or I can put Tamyo to one. And keep Lutri to combo with the Reunion. And maybe cycle this first here. And then I'll keep up with the Thassa's intervention. Can maybe cycle Shark Typhoon otherwise. Let me aid your research. Still no Teferis. Of course, in an 80 card deck, they're less likely to hit it. Narset prevents a card draw from Uro. And then I think I'm just gonna pass. I could tap out for one of these win conditions, but we have enough pressure in play. Would rather just sit behind my counter spells for a situation like this. Don't think I'm gonna play Lutrain of turn, and I still want to keep intervention as a uh, counter spell here. So do we just pass? Could go Lutri and Reunion, or I can just cast a Reunion, get rid of Flame Sweep and Roll. Uh, and then I can commence the endgame end of turn. Another Shatter. So if I go end of turn Lutri, I don't quite get to kill them. We'll just untap. 
Yeah, this Nars set in place definitely doing a lot of work too. And we'll just pass with Commence and Intervention. Electromancer also definitely being pretty useful here, giving us the mana discount. Yurion can Intervention for... I guess I want to Commence first, right? That way we have a bigger zombie token. And our opponent concedes. Alright, awesome. Managed to beat the Yorion deck. Luckily they didn't find their Teferi, which could have been annoying when holding all those counter spells. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing an Obosh deck. What do we think of this hand? I guess it's fine. Can always use the Cathartic Reunion to discard some of the more expensive cards if I don't think I'll be able to cast them. And probably end up shocking the gutter bones. Keep up the Thassa's intervention. Could also negate that, actually. They might not have a ton of non-creature spells in the deck. Could play Narset. I like keeping up Intervention, and then we can just Intervention for two if they don't play anything worth countering. And then keep the Cathartic Reunion to combo with Lutri, perhaps. Hmm, drill bit's annoying. I guess I just cast the intervention to draw some cards. Because I do want to hit my land drops too. They might take Niv. They might take Reunion to prevent me going Reunion plus Lutri. Uh, they take the Niv Mizzets. And a Regisaur. That is a scary card. So I might have to go Lutri plus Reunion to dig me towards an answer. Narset could maybe find one. I think I'm gonna go with uh, Reunion plus Lutri. And then Temple can go, and then between Electromancer and Narset. Kind of prefer the Electromancer since it might help me unload all the cards I draw from uh, Lutri next turn. Nice, Storm's Wrath could be good. They drew a land, so they get to play a bush, sadly. Which means I'm forced to chum block the Regisaur. Fire Prophecy isn't bad, because now I can Storm's Wrath plus Fire Prophecy. And then I can decide to take out the Regisaur or a bush. Which one is scarier here? Obosh basically deals 6. Regisaur deals 7. How many instants and sorceries do we have in the graveyard? For the Crackling Drake here. Probably enough to trade off for both of them. They will be able to get back Gutter Bones next turn too. I 
I guess I should fire prophecy first. Get rid of a thrill, maybe. Because yeah, if we let them keep a bosh, then every creature they play here would also deal double damage, even if we try and block with a drake on a bosh. Sadly, they hit a pretty good one. 4-5 menace. So, start with the crackling drake. And then I can play electromancer. But that's still not enough. Yeah, it's too bad. If they didn't hit the Nightmare and just play the Gutter Bones that turn, then we could maybe stabilize, but as is, we're pretty dead. Outburst would have been decent too, but not gonna be enough here. GG's. Close game, all things considered. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Zerdon deck, so it could be a cycling deck perhaps. This sounds fine, we'll need to find some removal. The Augur can maybe help there, and then turn 3 I can go Electromancer, still keep up Quench. And then Narset's very good against the cycling deck too, of course. I did not hit with Augur, sadly. A Rescuer. Uh, I'll just play Narset then. I know ways to your prowess. Next turn I can Electromancer, Coil, Keep Up Quench. Grab some card draw. Zenith flared in our set. Let's quench that. And our opponent explodes. So yeah, the one of our set is very effective against cycling decks. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Temple and Fire Prophecy to make sure we keep hitting our land drops. I guess I'll take another Temple. Your opponent also on a blue red spells type deck. Could cycle the neutralize end of turn, but neutralize could be good. Still have the temple to help me draw land four. And in these types of matchups, just hitting your land drops is usually the priority. Definitely want to try and use a quench as soon as possible before it uh, expires. End of turn I could also cast Earl's Outbursts, just to keep hitting my land drops. 
Charmander, sure. Find target for the Fire Prophecy. And what do I get rid of? Finale could be a little awkward to use. And then I can try and resolve Narsets. And if they counter, I can maybe fight back. So it's also possible that keeping Narset at 5 loyalty is worth it, in case they have a burn spell to finish her off. And if they're also playing a lot of card draw, but... Still get a 2 for 1 here. Both of these are good. Shark Typhoon's a bit more difficult for the point to interact with if we cycle it. I think I'll cycle the boon. Then think we'll be hard casting it for six. Commence is great, but sadly no land number six. Alright, we'll pass. End of turn, maybe Shark Typhoon for three. Another Termander. So. This is 8 total, they're 1 mana short of adapting this. I guess I'll outburst it, although I won't be able to counter back. Maybe I do still Typhoon instead. Could technically also copy it with Lutri if they try to counter in response, but... Still have a counter spell up, end of turn, have the option of casting the Outburst, and then commence the endgame especially, should be nice. Alright, Crackling Drake. I'll attempt to neutralize. Could also go for a Crackling Drake, keep up 2 mana per mission. And then wait a turn on commence. Opponent could also be playing their own Nif Mizzets, which... It's kind of tough for us to deal with, since we can't counter it, and we'll have to use at least two burn spells to kill it, resulting in the opponent drawing a bunch of cards. Dragonfire happens. Do they have a flame sweep, maybe? Nope, shock. Ah, let's negate the shock. Alright, GG's. Didn't even need all these other cards in hand. Alright, so the Lutri quote-unquote Brawl deck actually wasn't too bad. Definitely got to see the power of having that extra companion available a few times, getting to double up on a counter spell in a counter battle, or just doubling up on a card draw spell to uh, dig deeper into our deck. And uh, yeah, overall, the drawback of only having to play one-offs is actually not too bad in standard with so many playables these days, so we can kind of get away with it. And then we still get to enjoy the mana base of all four of dual lands, so it's definitely much better than your typical brawl mana base. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.